I'm a pharmacist that works with the diabetes program at the Ottawa Hospital. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about insulin and its use in people who have diabetes. I'd like to describe the actions of insulins, compare the different insulins that are available in Canada, to discuss the different insulin regimens that people are prescribed, to describe safe storage of insulin, to discuss the disposal of sharp insulin supplies, and to talk about insulin adjustment for travel. What is insulin? Well, insulin is an essential hormone normally released from the pancreas. It has many actions in the body. It's responsible for keeping the glucose levels in the blood at a safe level by ensuring the cells use it as energy or store it for future use. It aids in protein building, it's important in enzyme activity, and it's important for many other activities. Normally, a healthy pancreas will secrete small amounts of insulin throughout the day. Every six minutes or so, the pancreas will release a little squirt of insulin. This helps to maintain enough insulin in the body for all those activities that insulin is involved in. When a person ingests food, a bolus of insulin is released from the pancreas, maybe eight or ten times higher than that background amount of insulin that is secreted throughout the day. This insulin will help to take care of the glucose that gets into the bloodstream as the food is absorbed. There are different types of insulin. There's a short acting, a very rapid acting, an intermediate acting, and long acting. And all of these are made in a lab using biotechnology. All of these insulins are injected under the skin. We call this a subcutaneous injection. The first insulin we'll discuss is the short acting insulin or bolus insulin called Toronto or regular. This type of insulin was the first insulin that was discovered in 1921. However, it's in a very different form than it was in 1921. There are different brands of regular or Toronto insulin. One company makes it Toronto insulin and calls it Novolin. Another company calls it Humulin R, but both of them have similar actions. They are considered short acting. Regular or Toronto insulin starts to act in about 45 minutes to one hour. Its action peaks in about four hours. So if you were to take it just before breakfast, you would have its peak effect four hours later, which probably means before lunch or during a coffee break. The action of this insulin will last about six to eight hours. Often, this medication is used before meals or in combination with NPH insulin in mixtures such as Novolin 3070 insulin or Humulin 3070 or Novolin 5050 mix. Another group of insulins are the very rapid acting insulins which we call bolus insulins. Aspart or Novorapid, Lyspro or Humalog, Glulyzine or Epidra are the three different ones that are available that have the same or similar action. Aspart or Novo Rapid starts to act in about 20 minutes. Its peak action is about 30 minutes or 60 minutes and it lasts for about four or four and a half hours. Lyspro or Humalog starts to act in about 15 minutes after it's been injected. Its action peaks in about 30 to 60 minutes and it lasts about three and a half to four hours. Glulyzine or Epidra is another very rapid acting insulin whose onset is approximately 20 minutes after injection. Its peak action is about an hour and it lasts about four or five hours. All these very rapid acting insulins are used before meals and as supplemental insulin when readings are too high. Because it takes about four to six hours for our food to be absorbed and all the glucose to go into the bloodstream from the food we've ingested, these insulins have a pattern of action that almost matches the way our glucose absorbs from our meals. The next type of insulin that I'll discuss are, is the intermediate acting or basal insulin called NPH. The two types of NPH insulins are Novolin NPH and Humulin N. We consider this an intermediate acting insulin which starts to act in about one to two hours. Its action peaks in about six to eight hours, so if it was to be taken 
prior to breakfast, the peak action is at about six to eight hours. Its action lasts about 10 to 12 hours, depending on the individual. Sometimes it's used in the morning and at supper time, or maybe in the morning and at bedtime, or maybe just at bedtime, depending on the individual. We call this a background insulin because it has a very slow absorption and absorbs over a longer period of time than the very rapid acting or short acting insulins. Often we find it in combination with, with regular insulin in mixtures of 30-70, 50-50, 40-60, etc. When we see mixtures such as 30-70, it means 30% or about one third of the insulin in the mixture is Toronto insulin and 70% of that mixture would be NPH. So there are two components. There is the short acting aspect of the insulin, which will start in 45 minutes or so, and then the background insulin, the 70%, which will have a continuous action over six to eight hours. There are other combinations that are available that are combinations with the very rapid acting insulin. The insulin Novomix 30, which is a mixture of two insulins, has about 30% of the aspart or Novo rapid insulin, plus 70% of that same insulin with a protamine molecule attached to it, which makes it slow down its absorption and act a little bit like NPH. The Novomix 50 has 50% 50 aspart insulin plus 50% of that aspart insulin with a protamine molecule attached to it. Again, slowing down that absorption so that you have two types of insulins in the mixture, one which will act right away, starting in 10 minutes, and one which will take a little while longer to onset its action and help to provide you with that background insulin that is necessary in people who don't make enough of their own insulin. Hemolog Mix 25 has 25% 25 of lispro insulin plus 75% of protamine lispro insulin. The Humalog Mix 50 has 50% 50 of lispro insulin plus 50% of that mixture of lispro with a protamine molecule attached to it. Again, this is one way that we can use a mix of insulin commercially available, which will provide both the very rapid acting insulin and that background insulin that's required for good diabetes management. There are two very long acting insulins that are now available in Canada. We call them basal insulins. Glargine or Lantus and Detimer or Levamir are the two that are currently available in Canada. Glargine insulin, the long acting insulin, is used once or twice a day and is used as a background insulin to mimic the natural action of a healthy pancreas. It's less likely to cause hypoglycemia than other background insulins such as NPH. Detimer or Levamir is a long acting insulin also, which can be used once or twice daily. It is also considered a background insulin mimicking the healthy pancreas and is less likely to cause hypoglycemia than NPH. This is a cartoon like representation of the action of the different insulins that are available. The orange line represents the quick absorption of the very rapid acting insulins, Aspart, Lispro, and Epidra and demonstrate how those insulins are quickly absorbed and die down over four or five hours. The yellow line represents the action of regular insulin, which takes a lot longer to absorb, doesn't ever get to be as high, and takes a lot longer to be dispersed from the body. The lime green line is a picture of how NPH would be absorbed it shows that it has a peak at about six to eight hours and that it lasts a fairly long time and so we can use it as a background insulin over eight or ten hours. The dark green line represents the action of Detimer and Glargine insulins which we consider long-acting insulins. They are slowly absorbed and represent a good background type of insulin which never has a high peak that might put someone at risk of glycemia. Insulins may be either clear or cloudy. The cloudy insulins need to be gently mixed to resuspend the particles of insulin that have settled. 
So the ones that are cloudy are NPH or those, any of those which have protamine in the name such as lispro-protamine insulin or aspart-protamine insulin. It's important to carefully look at the insulin before you use it and discard any that may appear abnormal. If crystals have formed or it was frozen or it's discolored or the particles in the cloudy cartridges or vials do not evenly resuspend, this insulin should be discarded and not used because it's been damaged and its action will not be predictable. Hypoglycemia is the most common side effect of using insulin. It's important to learn how to prevent and treat this hypoglycemia when you're using insulin. So make sure that you check with your healthcare professional on how to handle hypoglycemia. Insulin allergy can occur in some people. This may be due to the insulin or some of the ingredients in the insulin solutions or perhaps the components of the vials or the cartridges or the needles. Insulin edema is a rare complication that occurs in some individuals who start on insulin or in those who start to treat with insulin in a more intense manner. manner. You may see this as swollen ankles or when ring fingers swell up and the rings don't fit or there may be a puffiness in the face. It will eventually resolve. Which insulin is right for you? Each treatment is individualized to reflect a person's lifestyle and preferences. For example, activity level, eating patterns, and financial status play a role in what you may prefer and what will be best for you. The insulin prescription needs to be individualized according to each person's lifestyle. It's important to take good care of insulin to make sure that it will continue to do its job. Unopened vials are stored in the refrigerator until they are expiry date. Always be sure not to use expired insulins. Open cartridges of Lantus are good for 28 days, Humalog at 28 days, Levamir at 442 days, Nova Rapid 28 days at re room temperature or refrigerated temperature. We recommend that once they're open that you keep them at room temperature, not in the sun, and do not freeze. If they are visibly changed, make sure you discard them and not use them. It's important to discard needles and lancets, which are sharps, safely. They are not to be placed in the garbage or down a toilet. So it's important that you investigate local laws for sharps disposal. Fire stations, hospitals, drugstores, and some other health care centers have facilities to discard sharps containers. When you're traveling, it's important to take enough insulin supplies when going outside of Canada. Insulin supplies may differ outside of the, our country, therefore you may be unfamiliar with different countries' supplies or there may be different insulins available outside of our country. When traveling across time zones of more than three hours, your insulin doses or regimen may need to be adjusted, so you need to contact your diabetes expert to help you with that. Always be vigilant with blood glucose monitoring, especially on travel days, because your activity may be different, you may be sitting more, you may be chasing the next connection, or planes may be delayed, or travel may be delayed, and meals may not be at the time that you're used to. Always carry an adequate supply of treatment for hypoglycemia when you're using insulin. Insulin is a truly miraculous medication that we use for treating diabetes. It is to be respected and used wisely.